Welcome to Division Analysis. I'm Fog. Come closer. 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 You've been told lies. Not only that, you've been spreading those lies. And now it's up to me to straighten this out. Okay, let's get straight into it. Lie number one. Burst DPS. Or more specifically, Burst DPS as a comparison tool. If you've been around the game for any period of time, no doubt you have seen one of these. A Burst DPS spreadsheet. Excellently put together. It has got all the weapons. It has their accurately reflected base damage. It's got their total mag damage, and then it's done the calculation for you to show you what the burst DPS of that weapon is. In the case of the FAMAS, 2.209550 total mag damage, divided by the time it takes to fire that mag, in the case of the FAMAS, 3.33 seconds, gives us a burst DPS of 662,865, commonly considered to be one of the highest burst DPS weapons in the game. So let's take it and let's compare it to the ACR, one of the lowest DPS weapons or burst DPS weapons in the game. Literally a 15% difference, the equivalent of a talent on a gear piece. So let's take them to the firing range. I'm wearing my test build, if you don't know why I've got it on or what it's created or why I created it, go back and watch some of the previous videos. I'm using a fully maxed out for Mars with 5% proficiency added on and a non-optimized ACR, not even proficient yet. Both weapons are carrying two crit chance mods, a stability mod and a 20 round magazine. We are going to be firing at a named enemy target at 5 meters. Here's the FAMAS. Unable to burst it down. And now I'm going to speed up the footage. I'm going to do it two more times just for the sake of science. Okay. Now let's swap over to our bottom tier ACR. Hmm. Interesting. Sped up again. Reset the target every time. One last time. So I could do the calculations and show you that the ACR in fact has a higher burst DPS against a named enemy, but it's a bit easy just to show you. <coughs> there it is. ACR able to kill the named enemy faster than the FAMAS. How does this occur? And that's because burst DPS is actually the average damage per second that this particular weapon does against a target that this particular weapon is capable of killing inside of one mag's damage. Terrible for comparison. DPS is damage over time. And if you want to scientifically or mathematically compare it, you have to control one of those things. Either the amount of damage to be done, or the amount of time over which to do it. Lie number two. Sustained DPS. This is worked out by firing a complete magazine from start to finish, all of its rounds. And then this time, instead of just dividing by the time it takes 
to expend the magazine, we now add in the time it takes to reload as well. Here we are, burst DPS and sustained DPS tables ordered from highest to lowest. As you can see, they're completely different. No wonder there's so much confusion. So, sustained DPS calculation. As I said, it is the entire mag's damage followed by the reload and that entire mag's damage divided by the time it takes to fire all of it followed by the reload. Here is a scale representation, blue of the firing time, red the reload time. And the calculation goes on. But how does that compare to in-game? Well, here is a physical representation of what we would expect to find in-game. We have six enemies that have arrived in a wave, we burst an enemy down, we reload. Burst an enemy down, reload. Now I've heard some content creators say that because I am bursting every enemy down, that means that the burst DPS calculation is all I need. Let's go back, have a look at this. So like I said, scale representation, and this is the same as in-game. So the blue now is represented by the average number of bullets it takes to burst, burst, burst down an enemy, uh, and in between the reloads for that weapon. Again, to scale for the FAMAS. If we want to compare the amount of damage that is done in both situations, then we have to control one of those variables. If we're wanting to look at the damage, then we have to control the time. So here I'm going to cut off the time at this point here, even though the in-game model was just about to enter into a reload, which would technically give it the advantage and the amount of damage being done. But let's compare. Same amount of time, we're going to remove all the amount of time that it wasn't doing damage, and we're going to total up now all the damage that was done over that time. There. You can see very clearly the amount of damage that was done in an in-game scenario versus even the sustained DPS calculation is less. So for those creators that are saying that the burst DPS calculation is closer because I'm bursting down enemies, you're actually less than a sustained DPS calculation. And the scariest thing is this is based on 100% accuracy. Lie number three. It's not a huge one in comparison to the other couple that I've mentioned already, but it is a personal bugbear of mine. Table organized according to DPS. And then down the side, we have the weapon systems that only have three mods available as opposed to four just as a footnote that they are missing a mod. And because this table is chosen not to include crit chance, crit damage, then it is very hard to adjust the DPS calculation to reflect the benefit that is provided by having an extra mod, or in this case, the deficit that's provided by having one less mod. But to give you an example, on my test build, if you build accordingly, to the mods that are available to you, the Carbine 7 at 618,991 with a new mod configuration would actually increase its DPS by 2.17%, taking it to 632,000 burst DPS, which puts it ahead of the Honey Badger. What you would see is every one of those four slot weapons rise and every one of the three slot weapons drop when it comes to DPS. And the same thing applies for the exotics. They have fixed mods, sometimes better, sometimes worse, but the build needs to be adjusted in order to reflect the damage. So for an upcoming comparison video that I have, I had to solve these problems. For weapon mods, it was nice and easy. I will just be varying the build to maximize damage utilizing the available mods that are on the weapon system for both four slot weapons and also for the exotics. And when it comes to the burst and the sustained metric, 
DPS, a measure of damage over time, so I have to control either damage or time. Now given that there is a certain amount of damage that needs to be done in order to kill every enemy, can't be time. But there is a metric that we can use available to us, and that is time to kill. The question is, time to kill what? If we want an accurate reflection of in-game performance, then that metric has to reflect in-game, and in-game, that's determined by a wave of enemies. Once those enemies are down, you can then move on. And the timer stops. We also have to input an accurate reflection of in-game damage. So that requires us to determine all of the in-game variables when it comes to damage. Those are the things like what is the health and armor distribution across each of the enemies that you're shooting. Were they in cover? Were they out of cover? And at what distance were they engaged? In the next video, you will get the fruits of my hard labor gathering that very data. I had to run every single mission three times to get the stats. I then had to go back and play it over again at a quarter of the speed in some cases. I had to do it without dying and annoyingly I had to do it without getting rogues which is what you're seeing in the background. Now if you're interested in those statistics as much as I am, even maybe not as much, you're still interested, then subscribe. Following on from that, once we have all that data, it then gets to weapon comparisons and in my opinion it will be the most accurate weapon comparisons that this community has ever seen. Again, if you're interested, subscribe. If you like the video, like it, share it, tell your friends. I'll see you in the next one. Fog out.